Welcome to a special Anglican TV interview. I have with me David Old. He's a priest in, well, you're in Australia. Are you a priest of Sydney, Australia? In the Diocese of Sydney in <laughs> Australia, yes. All right. As I mentioned before, we have David Old on again. He's a regular contributor from Down Under, bringing us news that happens as it happens. And right now, it's happening. You're electing a new Archbishop of Sydney. He will be the Metropolitan also of South, South Wales? New South Wales. New South Wales. Too many terms for us Americans to know. We just, you know, <laughs> we'll right. do a North Carolina and a South Carolina, but not a New South Wales. That's just too much. I, uh, you do have a New York and a, a New Jersey. Yes. No, I just stop and think about that for a moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's uh, make the announcement. Sure. So it's not official yet as you and I speak, although perhaps it will be uh, when this goes to air. But the results have just been uh, announced from what's called the final list election uh, of our election for a new archbishop. That is to say there were two names left on the paper. Uh, the, uh, the previous evening, two of the candidates having been removed uh, from that list. Uh, and of those two names, uh, only one candidate got a majority in both houses of the Synod in the clergy and the lay. Uh, and that candidate is Kanishka Raphael, who is currently uh, the Dean of the Cathedral in Sydney. He was always going into the election uh, the presumptive uh, favourite. Uh, and so it was going to be a hard uh, work for any other candidate to get enough support, I think, to uh, overcome that. But Synod over the last uh, two or three nights has had the chance to test uh, that notion and it's come it's clearly come to a mind now that Kanishka Rafael is going to be Sydney's new Archbishop uh, they will meet in a few hours time here in Sydney I think in about five or six hours time they'll be meeting there'll be a final list election where there'll be one name on the list uh, Kanishka Rafael's name is straight up and down uh, yes or no a vote you should expect to see almost everyone say yes to that name and then if it's anything like uh, the last uh, Archbishop's that I was part of. Uh, at that point, uh, Kanishka Rafael, uh, the Archbishop-elect, will be called in to rapturous applause and he'll give a short speech to Synod. You'll expect to see the press releases and all that. But it's, a, it's de facto now. It's as good as uh, the man standing up at the Republican or the Demo uh, Democratic uh, Convention with the votes, the votes in the bag. A little bit of background. How many uh, rounds did this go? Sure. So this uh, went two competitive rounds and the round tonight will be the third round. On the first round, we had four candidates, uh, Kanishka Rafael himself, uh, and then the other um, candidate who was thought to have a chance, really, which was uh, Bishop Michael Stead, who's uh, one of the regional bishops in Sydney, a well-liked candidate, seen uh, maybe as a little bit more of an administrator than the charismatic uh, leader. And that certainly was one of the big issues that came up, I understand, in the debate in Synod over the last two nights. Uh, alongside those two, we had uh, Bishop Peter Haywood and Bishop Chris Edwards, all uh, both of them also regional bishops uh, in Sydney. On the first night, it's a straight up or down vote on individual bishops. Uh, do you want them to go forward to the next round? And on that one, uh, it was only Kanishka and Michael who went through. And then last night, Synod voted on each of them individually to put them through to the final round. And the results were just posted. You can see them on my website, davidolds.net. Uh, and uh, Kanishka was the only name that went through. So two nights of um, proper debate. And tonight, a bit of a, uh, I want to say coronation kind of a feel to it, although that obviously will be the consecration, which will happen, I think, later this month. All right. Number one topic in my, mm. my book, shoes to fill. Can this candidate, shoes to fill. Can this candidate fill the shoes of the previous two uh, archbishops in, in GAFCON times? You know, we're, we're in now GAFCON in, times. You know, we're now in cool. GAFCON times. We're dealing no longer with an effective... Anglican Communion, the instruments of unity are shot. The Archbishop of Canterbury is, uh, you know, basically AWOL. Um, they don't let the primates do anything. Um, the AAC is useless, or ACC yep. is useless. So, you know, um, can this candidate fill those shoes? Well, yes, he, he's a known entity. Um, in our in our last uh, general synod that happened here in Australia, he of course uh, was the proposer alongside with Bishop Richard Condy, who's the chair of GAFCON Australia. He was the proposer of the uh, main motion on the issues that divide us. He the sen and that was a, a motion censuring the Scottish Episcopal Church. Uh, I spoke very clearly to that uh, and has been speaking on a number of occasions uh, at, at events. 
uh, on that issue. So in terms of uh, where he stands on the on the key contentious issues, uh, no change. I just described a moment ago to someone else who asked me exactly the same question. Um, different hand on the tiller, exactly the same uh, direction. There'll be a bit of a different style. Uh, Kanishka is not a Sydney man through and through and through. Uh, I don't think uh, brought up in the diocese. Uh, his parents came to Australia from Sri Lanka when he was seven years old. So he's always been a little bit culturally uh, outside Sydney, uh, but Sydney has clearly embraced him uh, as their own. As And um, we don't elect people that we're not confident in. So there, there's a great deal of confidence in, in Kanishka. Uh, he's uh, media-wise, we're looking at someone who actually is getting better and better at being in the media, got that same sort of winsome approach uh, that Glenn Davies uh, became known for. And he's also well-respected uh, around the traps. Uh, Kanishka was the rector for many years of St. Matthew Shenton Park in the Diocese of Perth. It was essentially uh, a, a lighthouse, not the only evangelical, but a lighthouse gospel place in uh, what many people might consider to be a diocese uh, that's gone off the rails. Uh, and he handled those relationships very, very well, worked his place in the diocese uh, very, very well, and hard to find anyone that speaks ill of him, even if they uh, disagreed with him profoundly on theology. So all around, uh, a great choice. And uh, all I'm hearing some people say right now is that actually uh, Bishop Michael Stead uh, is keeping his position as a regional bishop, uh, right-hand man, the, the slightly more uh, administratively minded, um, uh, the feel more theologically adept, even more theologically adept uh, guy as well, one would say. That's the one thing about Kanishka that's different to the previous two. The previous two have had doctorates in theology and have been known as theologians. Uh, Kanishka doesn't have that reputation, but he does have a reputation as a fine Bible teacher, a great expositor, uh, and a leader of people as well. So, um, yeah, uh, not quite the same, but... Um, steady as she goes, I think, is where, is where we're looking at, with a little bit of flair, perhaps. And so, how is he going to be received by the other, and I'm going to say this, provinces, you have many provinces within your province, three provinces within your province, how will he be received by the other archbishops? So look, when he sits down with uh, the Metropolitan Archbishops and the rest of the diocesan bishops, um, obviously uh, he's a different man, there'll be maybe a slightly different tone uh, and style of engagement, uh, but uh, I think they, they acknowledge already there'll be very little shift in position. Uh, the GAF composition hasn't changed, and Kanishka, of course, is fully signed up to that, um, as as so many of us are. Um, he's as, he's winsome like Glenn Davies was before him. I think Glenn Davies' great advantage was that he worked so hard at relationships that when people, um, uh, well, let's be frank about it, broke their word, went back on agreements, uh, the, the notion that they'd done so to a gentleman, uh, such as Glenn Davies, uh, made, it, made it doubly bad. I don't see that changing much uh, with Kanishka. Uh, himself. Uh, like I said before, um, boats moving in exactly the same direction, just a different captain but holding the tiller in exactly the same angle uh, that it was before. Uh, what's really interesting here is not so much the, the national stuff which hasn't changed, but uh, the Synod was addressed right at the start by its president, which is Peter Lynn, one of the bishops that wasn't nominated. Uh, and our big challenge here is not just the national church issues, but Sydney is expanding exponentially. Uh, it's a strange city. It's, it's bunched up against the coast uh, and the CBD is right up on the Pacific coast and then sprawling out westward. Uh, is the growing Sydney, Greater Sydney Basin. We're expecting to see two and a half, maybe million more people in the next 20 years or so. And that's the great challenge for us, not just those political things, but um, getting churches built and planted into those new communities that are growing all the time. And uh, he'll have to be thinking hard about that as well, how we put those structures in place. Yeah, we get some preview to the Australian po politics up here in, in the yeah. upper great regions. and. Yeah, you're just about as crazy as we are sometimes. Oh, do you mean the actual politics in our in our in our national parliament? Yes. Oh, mate, I I, I don't know what I can add to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah it's, we're, we're all doomed, aren't we? Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, uh, well, we'll talk about that some of the time. Well, thank you so much, uh, David, for the update. I'm going to put this online so people get the uh, information firsthand. Thanks, Kevin. Great to be with you. Do keep praying for us. <laughs>